a longtime subscriber, John McLaurin, sent me this wooden treasure chest. It was full of great old tools. They were all in really good shape, not the rusty junk I'm used to. I chose this Joseph Lucas girder to clean up a little more. It looks like the previous owner's initials were LH. The jaws look to be in good shape. Its issue was that it was locked up solid. The screw came out easily enough. I wrestled with it for a little bit and then it started moving. I used super clean degreaser on all of the parts. The slot in the movable draw was a challenge to clean. Here are all of the parts rinsed and dried. The jaws had almost no signs of wear. It looked like the worst damage was on this back rail. Somebody had to have been pretty desperate to have used this little wrench as a hammer. I like the knurling pattern on the adjust nut. I went over the mushroomed areas with a couple of small files. I used my 1x30 sander and a 120 grit belt to remove the dents in the back rail. I ended up going over the whole wrench. Here's the wrench after 120 grit. I was really careful not to sand away the maker's mark. I used the little sanding drums in my Dremel to get the underside of the jaw. I find those sanding drums do a nice job on curved areas like this. Once I had the wrench sanded down to about 240 grit, I went over it with a fiber wheel. Chuck and I polished the wrench with our flits. I opted for the polishing wheel in my hand drill for this project. I decided to put a layer of grease on the surfaces that contact each other. I ran it up and down a few times and then wiped off the excess grease. 
Okay, here's what the wrench looked like straight out of John's treasure chest. And here it is cleaned up. The wrench was patented by Joseph Lucas's son, Harry, in 1898. I found that searching for UK patents is a lot tougher than US patents. This one took some digging. Joseph Lucas started making lamps and accessories for bicycles in the 1870s. The company was able to transition their product line to meet the needs of the growing automotive market in the early 1900s. According to Grace's guide, Joseph Lucas and Son became Joseph Lucas Limited in 1897 and remained that name until 1951. The company made many acquisitions and had many subsidiaries and divisions throughout its history. In 1972, there was 100,000 employees working at 60 associated companies. The company was finally acquired by TRW in 1999. I found a Lucas Industrial Battery Company in the UK that traces its history all the way back to Joseph Lucas. Thanks again to John McLaren for all of the great old tools. This girder is a great addition to my British tool collection. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Ooh, 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 it's moving. Oh, baby.